Hi friends, um, you're welcome to this curriculum course presented to you by the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa in collaboration with the United Nations Institute for Development Economic Planning. The curriculum you are in for is titled Skilling Public-Private Partnerships and Meeting Post-COVID Business Environment Needs at the Wake of the African Continental Free Trade Area. And um, it promises to be very insightful. To set context for your expectations and how this would flow, um, I need to say that you are in for an eight weeks course, but the, it's self-paced for nine weeks. And um, the modules in each week are strictly tailored to public-private partnerships frameworks and then and then and then in um, procedures. While would also have um, two webinars that would be purpose designed um, to meet the bespoke realities of um, the African continental free trade and um, our our. our the, the, the pains of the pandemic and how we can reach a middle ground for the trade development of the African landscape. Um, that said, the first week we would have our, our course, introductory course on public-private partnership, basically an overview to introduce and scope the PPP concept distill the types of PPP, identify the difference between PPP and privatization, jurisdictional legalities with the, with, the, with the definition of PPP, meaning that PPP could vary from climb to climb, but the threshold, the fundamentals wouldn't be too different. Um, private finance PPPs and key features would understand that and then um, would also look at the types of payment mechanisms for PPPs. Yeah, usually, usually user pay PPP mechanisms and government pay mechanisms. Um, we we'll then move to um, week module two, which is establishing PPP frameworks and then PPP enabling environment. We will be telling us, talking to ourselves about what a PPP framework means and why we need to have such, and what is typically in a PPP framework. And then um, basically all of those would help us understand how to have a sort of simple procedure that all sorts of PPP, regardless of the forms or shape or nature, I mean, would always follow. Yeah, it's not a straight jacket, but it's it's a sort of rule of thumb. It makes the procedures for PPP streamlined and consistent. Yeah, so we'll move to week three, um, project identification and PPP screening. This is one of the procedures when you are embarking on a PPP. It is a pre pre. It is a pre pre PPP project implementation procedure. So you need to identify when a lot of bids come in. There are some bids that don't need to undergo appraisal. You, you already can identify, does this, does this meet the basic conditions for what we would like to in, enter into some more commitment in? Once you can decide that you can always do a pre-selection pre before you even move on to the appraisal stage, which is a deeper selection process. So here in this module, we'll look at steps to P in PPP screening, project prioritization, and then would 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 then move to appraisal appraising PPP projects, which is module four. And here we would be telling ourselves, now that you've identified the various projects and you've done a pre-selection, a, a, a very basic um, screening and sorting of which should go for the, the deeper appraisals, 
you want to know amongst these projects that are, that are set for appraisals, which should move on to the next stage. And you would always subject those to deeper considerations of, such as technical feasibility assessment, commercial feasibility assessment, market sounding, you know, you want to understand the macroeconomic assumptions behind what informs the bid of the of the of the of the of the bidding parties of the private parties. Um, then we move to module five, which after we've done that, that is a deeper consideration, a deeper selection process. The projects that scales through those would then go through structuring, drafting, and the tender and the contract, you know, that's at that point you want to enter contract, you want to, you want to have some, it's a, it's a progressive process where you get deeper into the negotiations as, as the stages go by. And so at this stage, we will be telling ourselves the overview of, of the structuring process and summary descriptions of an um, main tasks to be carried out in structuring phase. Um, at this point, you are having one-on-one -on -one conversations with the people who will then, the private parties who are interested in entering a, pro a PPP relationship with the government. And mind you, this whole um, process, of course, you'll be undertaking is good for both the private party and the government um, or the government entity. So. Um, then we'll move on to tendering and awarding of contracts. Um, at this point, you are taking a step deeper again. You want to award the contract after you structure the contract. Um, and so you want to understand the special characteristics of PPP tender processes. You want to understand negotiations with preferred bidders, because at this point, you now have who you can call preferred bidders. You want to evaluate you want to now go for that to have oversight or integrity into the PPP process, tender processes to be sure that um, you know, PPP can be, can be very delicate, um, to be sure that you follow best practices and then you avoid the hazards of uh, conflict of interest, um, litigations and all of those. Then um, module five, module seven, I mean, would we'll talk about managing the contract, strategies, delivery, and commissioning. So still here, we we'll be introducing the issues of contract management, um, defining contract management and PPP. We'll be looking at change management in within within the processes of a contract. Um, Claims management, if in case such of course, um, you'll be looking at issue management, dispute resolutions in a project, in a PPP project. Uh, and in the end, we also look at knowledge management and succession planning because there might be moments for sequencing all of those. Um, so the, um, the learnings are, are going to be well laid out because PPP is a very is a very procedural process, and it can be applied across sectors, be it tourism, be it healthcare, be it sports, and all of those. All of this would be like like the 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 the, the framework, the 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 rubrics that would guide how procedures play out from both the private party and the public party. Then um, lastly, the last module for module eight would be managing the contract operations and and back. At some point in the project, you would you would the private party particularly would have to hand back. The public party will receive, depending on the nature of the contract. And so there are procedures for transitioning in the PP project, contract management still and then procedures for managing finances, audit, audits and all of those, managing fiscal risks and exit and unback strategies. We'll look at all of those. Now, while we look at all this in a very straight jacket way, strictly tailored to PPP, our bespoke webinars will look at 
setting the context, the first way we now look at setting the context, scaling PPPs in meeting post-COVID-19 business environment needs at the wake of AFCFT. That means at this point, we'll be tying it all together. We will help you to understand the context of AFCFT for the African manufacturing sector and the private sector pretty much. Um, illustrative sectoral and subsectoral value systems considerations for a beneficial and workable economic integration. We would also do that for market access considerations. We'll do that for investment package, packaging considerations. And um, we would also look at the challenges of the private sector, of the private sector led con contribution to salvaging the state of the African business environment for its survival. When you understand all of this, you'll be able to connect the dots, how those PPP layers and fit in for me to be an ambassador of change, trade development, trade readiness for my own economy, for my own client. And so that's the value of the webinar. Um, we didn't have the webinar in a curriculum version because it's, it's a flexible and time is a time for brainstorming, is a time for ideation, is a time for learning from both the tutor, the teachers, with the teachers and the students. And so that time we we'll build our brains out. And then the second webinar would be reflections on cross sectoral trade challenges and windows for PPP scaling, applications and insights from everyone. I mean, would, would pick applications as it obtains in your economy, what you've seen, where you see some gaps and all of those. So there we'll be looking at trade development, the lever for Africa structural transformation. We'll be looking at PPP, public private partnerships, a viable vehicle for Africa's trade development. And we'll be touching it with some practicality, um, broad trade focuses with cross cutting perspectives for PPP considerations. There we'll be talking about trade and companion policies that you must put into context when trying to see how to use the PPP and all of those. We'll talk about gaps in the trade and services space, trade and goods, informal economic trade, micro, um, small and medium scale enterprise, and even SME internationalization. We'll be looking at all of those standards and quality infrastructure everything that makes the ecosystem that should become more ready and promote your business environment. And so we are saying that PPP can fairly fit in and help if we can wear some innovative lenses to these issues and look at them from some non-siloed framing of possible trade futures across the sectors. And so um, this pretty much gives us a rough background. And then um, I hope to meet you as we proceed with the subsequent modules. Do have a great time with us.